So welcome to Rensselaer. I hope uh, many have invited you and welcomed you so far. Uh, I'm super excited to be working with you today. And um, basically we are going to, hold on one second. First thing I wanna do is make sure that you guys can all hear me. Um, can you do me a favor before we begin officially? It's just type in the chat. Okay, perfect. If at any point, this is something I always like to mention that um, you lose audio, you guys are a super small major, so unmute your microphone and let me know if you can't hear me at any point because while I'm giving my presentation, I can't always hear you um, see the chat room. So I wanna make sure I'm not talking to a wall during that. So, okay, so now we're gonna begin. And uh, first I'm gonna begin by explaining where we are and what we're doing. So this is your major specific video chat for environmental engineers. And uh, it's a awesome major. Um, like I said, you guys are probably about 16, between 16 and 20 students I get for environmental engineering every year. So um, there's a lot of benefits to having a small major because you get to know your classmates really well and the faculty are really hands-on. So I think you're in for a really positive experience. So I'm Karen Lewis, uh, I'm your academic advisor. And just so you know, I do advise civil engineers as well and also mechanical engineers in the School of Engineering Advising Hub, which is my uh, office. And below is my contact information. I'm sure you've received emails from me so far, so you have my email address. So for today's seminar, um, basically what we're gonna be doing, it's not gonna take a lot of time, but I wanna make sure you understand a couple of key points that were covered in the registration guide um, to help you with registering for your fall classes. So we're gonna do a little curriculum planning. We're gonna talk about some of the resources that support you. And most importantly, I'm gonna answer any questions that you might have. So again, I'm your academic advisor and we have a unique partnership here at RPI with faculty advisors as well. So I'm gonna explain the dynamic of that with you um, right now. So for the first year you come to Rensselaer, you're gonna be meeting with me and I'm considered your hub advisor. So um, your hub advisor goes over some of the logistics of curriculum requirements and all of that kind of stuff. And then from sophomore year on, you're gonna be meeting with your faculty advisor. And your faculty advisor is going to deal with a little bit more major specific details. So, to re-establish that or to go over my role and faculty role, you and I are gonna talk about Haas requirements. You're gonna hear a lot about Haas in the coming weeks. Um, and we're gonna be doing our four-year plan. And the four-year plan basically lays out the courses that you're gonna take every semester. And when you meet with your faculty advisor in sophomore year, junior and senior year, that's gonna leave you a lot of time to discuss internships, mentor, mentoring opportunities, study abroad, arch planning, all the stuff that's really detailing your major. I go over logistics and they get to talk about the fun stuff, if you will. So this is my team in the hub. Now there's a couple of different reasons I put this slide um, here. One is, of course, if there's ever questions about your major, I have a lot of people at my fingertips who I can connect you with to discuss other majors. So it's really kind of a team that fully supports you as a student. So for example, environmental engineers, um, sometimes chemical engineering might be a, a similar major that somebody would wanna learn more information about. And if that's the case, I might connect you with Valerie or if you want to, go electrical, um, you know, I might connect you with Kara and pull her into one of our advising meetings. So you have a lot of resources here in the hub to support you. Now, 
what we're doing today, um, we're going to briefly go over a couple of things that were discussed in the registration guides. We emailed those to you a couple of weeks ago, and hopefully you were able to review most of the content. It's a lot of information, but keep that as a resource because you could keep referring back to that throughout the school year for any information that you might need. The links in there are super helpful calendars, um, deadlines, all that kind of stuff. And Today we're having the video chat, so that's part two. And then next we're gonna also, in the next two weeks, I want you to try and book an appointment with me um, if you haven't already, just because I'd like to talk to you in detail about your personal situation, what your career goals are, and also pick out some courses that, you know, if there's certain situations that might apply to you, whether they're AP credits, transfer credits, IB credits, all of those, and we could discuss those in more detail at a one-on-one -on -one meeting. So let's talk curriculum planning. Um, basically, we're gonna just talk about what courses you're gonna look to register for. Here we go again, fall schedule. <laughs> So basically, the most important thing that we're going to be doing is math. We're going to take a science class, possibly two, and an engineering course and your Haas course. So usually I tell all of my students what, regardless of major, in the first couple of semesters, I want you to target registration at 16 to 17 credits. And the reason why I suggest that is because one, it's going to be a healthy progression towards graduation within the four years. And two, if there's ever a circumstance where you might have to drop a course and believe me, it happens all the time, whether you know, teaching learning styles with the professor that's teaching it that semester might be different for what you're used to, or maybe you get sick and you need to lighten your load. There's so many different circumstances that come up. And I always encourage you to talk to me about them before you drop a class. But in the event that you have to drop a class, full time status is 12 credits. And most courses are four credits. So if you're 16 and you drop a course, you'd still be at 12, still full time. Financial aid and housing get impacted if you drop below full time status. So it just keeps things a lot easier. So again, 16 to 17 credits is our target, especially for this first semester. So here is your environmental engineering template. I use these with um, every meeting that I have. I like to highlight what's been completed to show progress. I'm kind of old school in that way. If you're meeting with me in person, I grab my highlighters and make different colors. And when we're doing our four year plan, this is what we'll use as a guide. And I say a guide because there are courses that can be easily moved around within the curriculum. And as long as we are satisfying prerequisite courses, for example, courses that are required to take prior to taking the course you intend, um, we can do a lot of things. Um, there's a lot of flexibility within the template. So some students choose to go verbatim course by course through the template, and that's perfectly fine, because obviously if you satisfy all these courses, you graduate. But some students have different plans that we can discuss whether you want to pursue minors or, you know, anything really. Um, there's things that we can do to move courses around to um, manipulate the schedule to your, to your best interest. So for our registration purposes for the fall, Again, we're going to take a math course, a science course, your engineering course, or physics, which we'll cover on a little bit, a one credit class, and then your Haas class, which we're going to go over a little bit because those are the questions that I've been receiving the most from for incoming students. So registration begins on July 13th and you are going to receive a time ticket. Now I have received emails from students saying, I didn't get my time ticket yet. They haven't been sent out yet. They will be sent out next week. So that time ticket is unique to you. Set a timer, set an alarm, whatever the circumstances are, tell your mom, I don't care. Make sure you register at that specific time because what will happen is we allocate a number of seats for every course to specific registration times. And if you register at the time that you are issued, you have the best chance possible to get into all the courses that you want first round. 
if you wait, like say for example, your time tickets at 10 and you don't register until 1130, I can't make any guarantees that the seats that you wanted in, in sections that you designated are gonna be there. So really set yourself up for success in this first semester by doing your registration at the time that was assigned to you. Last year was a mess because I had so many students that were like, oh, I didn't realize that I was supposed to register. I thought that I could register throughout that two week period. And that's true. So the time ticket gives you, it's kind of like racehorses out of the, the gate, you know? So do that. But if you do need to make adjustments, we do have a full two week window where we can make changes to your schedule. So AP scores might not be in yet. And if we need to, tweak things because of that going forward, we can, but I want you to register exactly at your time. So now we're going to talk about registration resources. Um, we sent a bunch of that information in uh, your registration guides, but I want to touch on a couple of things because there's been some new stuff that came to my attention in the past week and I've been using it and students have been really happy. So. Um, initially, we sent out information about YAKS, and when I'm done with this presentation, I'm going to show you what that looks like. It's schedule building software, which is pretty cool because it allows you to create schedules that don't conflict. Now, I'm going to date myself, but when I went to college, I had to draw a grid on a piece of paper and put courses in different boxes to kind of see what my schedule would look like. This does that for you automatically, which is kind of nice. The only negative side to YAKS, well, there's actually two. Um, YAKS is not real time. So when you're actually registering for classes, YAKS might tell you that there's seats available in a section, but it's not. Um, it might not have seats available. And the reason why is because there's so much of a lag and registration happens so quickly that it can't keep up. So we always refer to SIS and that would be your class search option um, for looking at real-time seat availability. And SIS is actually gonna be the platform that you register and add your courses. So if all of these things that I'm saying to you are foreign, I want you to look in the registration guides because it goes into it in quite detail. But also, I am your third resource. So we can book an appointment from now until registration and I can show you these things too. So we can meet just like this through WebEx. The link is actually gonna be the same. And you and I can create a schedule through YAKS or I can also show you what SIS looks like, um, you know, and we could go through the registration process. So if you haven't done this stuff yet, review the registration guides, but also book an appointment because we'll have all of this covered and you'll feel really good about registration once you understand all the logistics of it. So now we're going to go to your questions. I'm going to stop sharing my screen for a minute and uh, we're going to open up the, the opportunity for you guys to talk, okay? Okay. All right, since you're recording, does that mean all the video chats are being posted somewhere? Yes, um, we're actually, we have a YouTube channel um, and I think we might post them there, but I actually have to tech check with my technical person. I might even email the chats out to you guys specifically so you have them as a resource throughout the year in the event that there's questions that come up that we covered here today. So yes, they are being recorded and unfortunately, um, you know, we have, I set up two video chats per major, but life happens and sometimes students can't attend. So the best way for them to do this is for me to record it. Uh, can we set up an appointment by emailing you? Actually, I'm going to show you something different. So I'm going to send you a summary email at the end of this webinar that's going to contain some key points that I think are in, um, informative for you. And in the signature of the email that I send, in fact, in the signature of every email that I send, there is a link that I'm going to highlight in yellow and it's basically saying to book an appointment with me. So um, 
click on that link, you get access to my calendar and you could book an appointment and you'll populate my calendar right then and there. And we actually send you alerts about when your meeting is coming up so you don't forget as well. And it's way more efficient than me coming back and forth and us playing the are you available at 1130 kind of game. So definitely utilize that link in my email. And again, I'm going to send you an email right after this just so you can see specifically where that is, okay? What else you got, guys? Well, I'm going to show you something while we're all here because um, a student brought to my attention that Yaks has been somewhat slow lately, and it happens from time to time, especially when you have so many students building schedules. So I'm going to share my screen, and we're going to look at an alternative um, uh, schedule software called Quacks. And the thing that's uh, kind of cool about Quacks is the fact that um, it's new and it has it, it doesn't have that lag right now. So this is Quacks. It's very similar to the way Yaks is set up. And if you click on the word Quacks here, it's going to bring you to your main menu. So I'm going to just build a quick schedule just to show you kind of what things can look like and how you can customize things too. So I'm going to start with chemistry and we're going to tab down. Now you have the option to toggle all of the sections and I clicked the wrong one. So I'm going to go to chemistry one. Um, you have the option to toggle all the sections would give you the most flexibility with creating a schedule. But say, for example, you play a sport. And this happens from time to time because your um, professor or your coach wants you at practice at four o'clock. So I might choose courses that do not happen after four. So you can kind of pick and choose which courses you would want. Oh, I don't want that one because it's five. Okay, so then I would go up to schedule, and there are my five options for chemistry. And then I might take calculus one, and I'm not going to build a full schedule here, but I just want to show you specifically how this works just because it's new. And like I said, it's, it's definitely um, similar to YAC, so I don't want you to worry about that piece, okay? And here, you're going to note that there's some full sections here. With introductory courses or first year courses like calculus one and most of your Haas classes, you're going to see that this is full. It's not full. It's just for the fact that um, the course seats have not been populated because freshmen have not registered yet. So I want you to look at that as still being an option. So I'm going to toggle all sections here. And then I would hit schedule. So now you have 56 options, even though it's taking a minute to bring them up. And you can go through your options. Some don't move around much, some move significantly. And as you narrow down your choices, um, this is uh, how things would work. And I see that there's some questions here, so I'm gonna just look quick, hold on one second. Okay, when there are three times listed for one day, does that of course mean, okay. So, for example, chemistry, right? And I know Fiona mentioned it too. There's a lab lecture and recitation, and there's also a test block built in. So you can kind of navigate this a little bit by um, looking here. If you, it's kind of a, it's a little bit of a crapshoot, but just the long and short of it is if you have two sections that meet at the same time twice a week, that's as a rule, that's generally going to be your lecture. So for chemistry, um, your lecture would be Tuesday from like noon to 110 or whatever this is. And then this big section right here would be your lab. And chemistry also has a test block that is on Wednesday morning. So this section right here doesn't actually meet unless you have a scheduled exam. And then this right here would be your recitation. And a recitation is usually when you would either go over homework, you might have a quiz, you might be meeting with the TA. So 
chemistry happens to be a schedule suck. <laughs> That's what I refer to it as because it has so many meeting times. It kind of monopolizes a lot of time on your schedule. So getting this done in the first semester is really helpful because as you're taking more complicated courses as the curriculum progresses, chemistry would be done and it doesn't have, like other courses don't have nearly as many meeting times. So, okay, do we have any other questions? What are the Haas pathways and IH course? Okay, this is a great question, Melissa, because I have these prepared for you too. Um, Haas is going to be something that is continuously evolving through your career here at Rensselaer. And I'm going to go into, I'm going to send you these links at the close of our meeting. Um, the most important thing that you're going to want to do is we're going to begin with IHSS classes for Haas. And this link right here will tell you all the courses that are IHSS that are offered during the fall semester. And I highly encourage that you look into them. One of them in particular, Sustainability Debates, is a course that um, pairs really well with environmental. And a pathway, which um, you might have heard that language being tossed around, a pathway is required for Haas requirements. And what a pathway is, it's a three course sequence in a specific topic. So you can begin a sustainability pathway with sustainability debates. And this course, if you register for it, can actually lead to a sustainability minor. And if you think about environmental engineering with recycling and you know, conservation, sustainability really does make sense as a pairing for Haas. Now, another class that um, students have mixed feelings about, but I think that there's a lot of um, good uh, qualities in is economics. Um, you know, when you're when you're working, it's important to understand the financial piece of so many things. If you're a project manager, the financial piece plays a huge role in whether or not you're going to be landed for a job. So principles for, of economics could be another pathway that an environmental might want to pursue. Now, just because these are relevant to your major, it doesn't mean that you even need to do anything that is relevant to your major when it comes to Haas. Some students want to take a break from their major and do something in a completely different rhythm, and that's perfectly fine. So if you like music, for example, music might be a pathway that you would want to pursue, and we could talk about those things. Haas is something that is totally a personal decision, but I want to make sure that you have the resources to, um, to do that. Excuse me. No. Sorry guys, this is the reality of working from home. <laughs> anyway, so um, Haas is something that we could discuss in quite length and um, we could always go back to any of these, but I'm gonna email you these links to let you look at them all in a little bit more detail now that registration hasn't happened. Okay. Um, if person A has a time ticket for 10 a.m. and person B has one for 11 a.m. and they both register at 11.30, is there a priority to one of them? Are they both waitlisted based on how long the initial time ticket was? No, so the way registration works, it's not, you have a time ticket and there's a number of seats that are released at every uh, registration period. So, um, if you both register at 11.30 and you both put the CRN in to register for a particular section of a course, whoever enters it first is literally going to be the one who gets it. That's why I say do it exactly at the time that your time ticket reflects because that will give you the best chance to get into a course that you want to seek. Um, it's kind of a free-for-all. Registration's a little crazy. <laughs> so, But yeah, there is in precedence. If you had a 10 a.m. ticket and you waited till 11.30, you lost your window. So you're, you're in it with everybody else who's registering. And also, um, like I said, registration's open throughout the two weeks. So say, for example, you really wanted to get into AI and society, right? 
but the section was full when you went to go register for it. And that happens. That's the reality of registration. But during the two week window that registrations open, all of those seats are fluid because somebody might decide, hey, you know what? I just learned about this other class and it conflicts with AI and society, so I'm dropping it. So seats open up at random and it's always good to check because you might find yourself in a situation that you might be able to get into a class just by rechecking SIS periodically. Now, there are some courses that offer wait lists, and in the instance that there's a wait list that you sign up for, that random opening of a course, somebody dropping a seat, that's not going to be an option because the wait list kicks in and the person that's first on the wait list would be notified that there's a seat available. So in the instance that there's wait lists, definitely utilize them. But as far as IHSS classes, I don't believe there's wait lists. So those would be something that you'd want to check from time to time. Let's see what else I had planned for you. So these are the course descriptions for Haas, as um, I mentioned, and then we also have pathways. So when you select a topic of interest, um, you can always look into what pathways are based off of those courses. So this is more of a broad sense. So if you just review these and say, oh, you know, I really like game studies, this pathway is restricted. So that's not something that you would want to pursue. But um, if you are interested in history, these are the courses, you know, you can always work backwards by saying, oh, I want to do a history pathway. Then these would be the IHSS classes that you would look to register for in the first semester to remain consistent with that pathway. So there's lots of different ways you can navigate Haas. I'm going to give you all three of those links because I find it helpful to have all windows open to kind of look at one over the other. Do you guys have any other questions? I know I'm throwing a lot of information at you. Um, basically, the bottom line is that we want to make sure you feel comfortable with course registration. And I know that things are a little different this year um, with us meeting virtually, but we're here. We're here to help you. and. Uh, you know, that's the bottom line. Anything that comes up that you have questions about, I just, I want you to know that um, I'm here to help you. And if you guys want to turn off your, or turn your cameras on and unmute your microphones, you're more than welcome to do that at this point, because I'm long done with my presentation. So we could just talk if you wanted to do that as well. Or not. <laughs> Okay, well, listen, if, like I said, I'm going to send the summary email out and book an appointment with me. It doesn't have to be lengthy. Um, usually my appointments are a half an hour. They could be uh, shorter than that, of course, but I allocate in a half an hour for every appointment. If there's a circumstance where you feel like you might need more than the half an hour, and some students do, um, you're more than welcome to book back-to-back -back appointments, and there's no limit to the number of appointments you need to book or want to book. You can book as often as you want. Um, I have students who meet with me once or twice a month, and then I have students that meet with me once a semester. So whatever works best for your situation is perfectly fine with me. Okay, so I'm going to just hit stop record here. And... Uh,